Welcome back friends. In this video we will be talking about the fructose metabolism. Now in this fructose metabolism which is really important is that uh, this fructose metabolism can be carried out in two different ways and bo both of the ways are very very much effective. Uh, and uh, here one way is very very simple another one is a uh, little bit of complicated because it involves in many different stages but in in, in metabolic processes where if you are going with many different stages that is v most of the time are very very helpful for you because in metabolic processes intermediates play uh, the most important role of all so these are the intermediates which are <coughs> Just, uh, just, just, just linking all those stages together, which is just controlling all the stages together, which is help, to, which is helping to establish uh, the control systems. Okay, so uh, intermediates are good in this case. So again, we are having fructose. Fructose is also uh, monosaccharide uh, instead of glucose. So remember, uh, whatever I've said about these feeder pathways is that whenever you are having any kind of monosaccharide instead of sugar. Uh, instead of glucose, sorry, instead of glucose, uh, so you can take all these monosaccharides, and if you can produce uh, any one of the intermediate of glycolysis, you can just take this and can and all those conventional glycolysis future steps can be carried out, and your product will be worthwhile, right? So here I I at the end we produce glyceraldehyde C-phosphate or G3P. Now this G3P or glyceraldehyde C-phosphate is a very very good intermediate of glycolysis, as we, and we all know that. But and by producing this G3P, we can establish all the future glycolysis stages. That's a very, very important part. So let us first talk about the simpler pathway. So this is the first simpler pathway. We are having fructose, which is a 5-carbon ring here. So the fructose is there, and fructose is um, converted into fructose 6-phosphate by just adding one phosphate group to the 6-carbon position. So this is the 6-carbon position of fructose, and one, one phosphate group is attached to the 6-carbon position, and the phosphate, the source of phosphate is ATP. So there is an enzyme called hexokinase. We all know uh, the role of hexokinase pretty well. Now it will snap off one phosphate from the ATP and attach them into the 6-carbon position of the fructose, and producing fructose 6-phosphate from normal fructose. Okay, so this fructose 6-phosphate, as we are producing fructose 6-phosphate, we know that this fructose 6-phosphate is a very, very stable intermediate of uh, glycolysis. So fructose 6-phosphate can further be converted into other future steps and finally it will generate pyruvic acid. Okay, so this is the simpler stage. Now uh, let us look at the complex stage. And the complex stage or the second part uh, or the complex step of the reaction is we are having fructose and the fructose is converted into fructose 1-phosphate instead of fructose 6-phosphate. Okay, so again uh, we need kinase and the enzyme is here, it's called the fructokinase. Uh, it's not a hexokinase, it's the fructokinase, so whatever, the, the mechanism is almost, almost similar. But fructokinase is attaching the phosphate group uh, at the first carbon position instead of the sixth carbon position. Let me change the color. So it will attach this phosphate group at the first carbon position. So it attaches a phosphate. This is the first carbon position. It attaches the phosphate to the first carbon position. And right after the attachment of the phosphate at the first carbon position, it is producing fructose 1-phosphate. Now the fructose 1-phosphate is, re uh, is uh, this the cycle of fructose 1-phosphate is uh, getting linear or stretch stretched up. And here this is the uh, linear form of fructose 1-phosphate and the open chain form. Now through this chain we can see that this fructose 6-phosphate is a 6-carbon molecule. Now the 6-carbon molecule, uh, it can cleave itself from this region and it will generate two different molecules. One molecule, what it produces is this, uh, which is containing the this phosphate group, which is this. This is called, uh, yeah, one molecule is uh, this glyceraldehyde, uh, this one. Sorry, uh, this one this is the glyceraldehyde one molecule. So this is the first molecule, and this is that first molecule. And second molecule is the top or upper molecule, which is having the red color oxygen. And this oxygen is he, this one, and this is this is called dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So right after the cleavage of the six uh, open chain or six carbon open chain of fructose one phosphate, it will give rise to two three carbon components. One is the glyceraldehyde, another one is the dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Now remember, dihydroxyacetone phosphate is a very very imp uh, important intermediate of glycolysis, and this dihydroxyacetone uh, hydroxyacetone phosphate can generate glyceraldehyde C phosphate because dihydroxyacetone phosphate cannot be taken further. So we must generate the glyceraldehyde C phosphate to 
to carry out the future steps of glycolysis. For that, in the conventional manner, dihydroxyacetyl phosphate is converted into glycerol DHC phosphate with the help of enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. Okay, uh, but uh, the glycerol dehyde. Uh, is again converted into glycerol DHC phosphate with the help of attachment of a phosphate uh, phosphate group onto the third carbon position so which is this so this is the attachment of the phosphate group at the third carbon position by snapping of phosphate from ATP and attaching it here then finally what we produce we produce glycerol DHC phosphate in all the aspects now this glycerol DHC phosphate can be taken up uh, throughout the glycolysis steps and the future steps of glycolysis can easily be carried out and finally you can produce uh, a pyruvic acid throughout this glycolysis pathway okay so these are uh, the metabolism of fructose and fructose is metabolized in this way okay and i hope it will help you to understand thank you